for that couple, it was an easy for their families to digest it. And it's so <laughs> funny how one word in one language can mean completely something else in another language. <laughs> This is Benny. And this is Dhruv. And today we are going to react to a video called The Real Life Namaste Wahala Couples. So oh. evidently this is about Nigerian Indian couples. Let's check this out. I, I normally do jollof rice with yogurt. Indian Standard Time and African Standard Time <laughs> are like on two different levels. <laughs> Bele. Uh, Bele. You, you know, Bele means like pregnancy. No. I don't think anybody touched any of the booze because everybody was like. The Nigerians just the mango love like the crazy. mango lassi. We are not yet married, but we are getting there. We are actually currently engaged. Yeah. We've been together since 2014. We met in university when we're doing our undergraduate in Kenya. Um, such a cute couple, really. Really. They complement each other so well. And it's look, so look funny up. how one word in one language can mean completely something else in another language. It's so crazy. <laughs> and I love and to hear that way. Nigerians love mango lassi. I mean, that's good taste. Mango lassi is awesome. It is. <laughs> And interestingly, we both joined a pageant uh, competition. I waited a whole year. They, yes. they didn't even know I was his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so we eased them into it. It wasn't like all of a sudden there's this Indian chick that props up. <laughs> like, this is my girlfriend. And they're like, yeah. okay. He's, he's from Nigeria. He is, um, you know, obviously African. Um, you can't really hide that. So <laughs> it's it was it was just part of who he is. And I knew it wasn't going to be an issue with my friends or, or my family. As for my dad, I only told him recently. So it has taken him a bit of time. He's like work in progress. And I'm not necessarily pushing him um, a lot. Like I just want him to take his time and come to terms with it. Our first Nigerian... So it's interesting to also know that um, for that couple, it wasn't easy for their families to digest it. And I think it might be not because someone is African or someone is Indian. I think it might be that uh, since your childhood, you kind of assume things, even your parents assume things. And that's the image they have in their heads. So to completely erase that image and to bring someone new who looks and speaks and thinks and behaves completely differently, not in a bad manner, just very different from what you're used to is, is a little bit yeah. of a transition in, in terms of thoughts and acceptance. Very true. It's about simply unlearning, you know? Yeah. You have learned that this is what happens when you get married. If you're an Indian, you marry an Indian. If you're an African, you marry an African. That's the general assumption. And when that doesn't happen, it's like breaking stereotypes. And, and whenever you have to unlearn things or whenever you are out of your comfort zone. Of your comfort zone, so evidently you're like, oh my God, this is what I expected. And you are in a defensive position, right? You are, uh, and the best defense is often offense. So the, the, this can become a situation until you realize, hey, it would have anyways been different. And uh, if not with somebody from another country, then with another person from my country, it would have been a different situation. Things would have changed anyways, but you didn't expect them to change like this. Your expectations are not met. And that's what uh, can create a bit of a ruffle. Right? Yeah. Indian wedding was our own wedding. When we were planning this wedding, my mom made it very clear that she wants to have the Indian side well represented. <laughs> so that's like a non-negotiable. What we want in this wedding is a representation of both cultures. You do a bunch of like um, choreographed dances and have like close friends and family perform. So I'd ask, how lovely, can you see that? What a, what a beautiful blend of cultures just in the, these pictures you can see so pretty so beautiful it's endearing really it's so wow. and 
it's just uh, even to see the little tilak on his head you know and him just accepting all of that about her and i think it takes a lot of understanding when it comes right. to couples like these where the, both cultures have such rich histories i feel like um, in many cases and i'm not going to name any any certain culture but certain cultures are like i don't care however we do it i think indian way is so awesome let's do it that way i don't want my representation i don't know what to represent but african culture definitely has such a flavor that it it should be represented in these kind of weddings it's just so beautiful because africa and india are very similar in many many ways and then to bring out both those flavors in a wedding is just i think it's gorgeous yeah um, John's family to actually be a part of that as well. So they put together a little fashion Nigerian show. fashion show. The movie gave us some great ideas, especially when we saw uh, was it Jalof Biryani? Jalof Biryani. That, that was, was really cool. awesome. And that I was, was like, really wow, cool. that would be a great idea. Yeah. I'm pretty much vegetarian, so it was a little bit. Is Jalof Biryani a dish? No, actually, uh, we have biryani in Indian food, right? and they have jollof rice so i think in the movie namaste wahala they created a combination of jollof and biryani oh so, yeah it's, so it's cool. jollof is a kind of a tomato flavored rice uh mm. with, with meat options you know generally they have some kind of meat in that so i've been doing doing my research in african cuisine oh my gosh <laughs> i want to eat something now mm. it's more watering already right mm. <laughs> harder for me to find um, vegetarian option. Nigerian food without any meat, you know, it's not exactly Nigerian food. We don't believe in vegetarians. <laughs> so people have opinions and sometimes it's more like this shouldn't happen, um, this is wrong. Um, there are so many Indian boys in India, why not an <laughs> Indian boy? At the start of our relationship, oh, you know, what are you? Who is this guy? What are you doing with this kind of guy? You know, but you just, you learn to ignore that. I was confident. But it's not something that would only happen with a, a different country couples, you know. I feel yes. that, uh, I mean, in India, we have this like, okay, I'm a Punjabi, so my daughter should marry a Punjabi. Why would you want to go with a, with a South Indian? or mm -hmm. the Bengali, why, why, you know, and here it's different countries and again, the same problem, the why. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is one of the things I didn't enjoy very much about being in India was the nosiness that I felt, but uh, it's also their pros and cons to each culture, right? To, so to have a community around you, they are obviously going to ask questions if you're a community-based uh, culture. Right. Like, because right. uh, everything in the U.S. was so cool, this individualistic culture, but then no one really cares, right? No one's going to ask you how you're doing, or if they ask you, it's like, they don't really mean it many a times, right? Not everyone is like that. Obviously, there are pockets of good communities of in the U.S. And it's not just like a marriage of two people. It's a marriage of two families, two communities, rather. So there are bound to be these elements that will come about, I think, in both cultures, I would assume. Right. And, you know, even uh, no matter how open-minded a parent may be, but when it comes to your child's happiness, you are aware that, you know, the lesser of adjustments your child has to make, the less difficult it would be for your child, right? Your child may be a 30-year-old child, but you're like, okay, if it's within my country, within my community, within my, you know, the closer to my family, the closer to my tribe, the easier the transition into a new phase of life will be for my child. So uh, that's generally the concern for a parent when they say, oh, why do you want to go out of the box and marry a person who's not even your own country? Yeah, it's, a, it's not only an adjustment of... Uh the way of life obviously there there are similar elements but also the, this similar elements but also a distance 
right? Uh, I don't know if some of the couples, the girl is from, I mean, the girls are Indian. So if they are Indian girls from India or from Nigeria, but if it's an Indian girl from India, it's such a distance. Like say, as a parent, you're like, what if my a uh, child gets into some issues i'm so far away i'm like it's a, like such a long flight from india uh, then someone being in india right so there are all these concerns that a parent probably feels in in terms of distance right. as well confident enough to know that you know we would be able to fight this fight for this and see it through to the end the importance of learning about the other culture the minute you say I'm getting married to this person, that's the mentality you have. This is yours. This is your family. This is your unit. You gotta protect it. You gotta take care of it. Just humble yourself enough to learn. Learn as much as you can about the other culture because that can actually be what helps progress things. Glad you're on my team. <laughs> <laughs>